Greetings all and welcome to Dave's Craft Room. Today's video, we're going to be making a Hawaiian quilt. I'm very excited to make this Hawaiian quilt. I've made two blocks already. This was the first one I made and um, I really like the block. It's a ulu that I got from Po'akalani Quilts and um, the only thing I don't like about it is the orange fabric was kind of cheapy. So um, you can see through it, but I might try to fix that for the final quilt. So let's start at the beginning. Um, I started doing this because I was spending a lot of times in hotels when I moved. Because, you know, quarantine and waiting for the house to be ready and everything else like that. So um, this is a great project that you can take with you. We're going to start from beginning to end. Well, not quite at the beginning because I already made two blocks. But from beginning from now to end and make the whole quilt. I learned how to do this by watching our girl sissy on po'akalani quilts videos and i have their three books so so we're gonna start our next block um and I'll show you how I do it from start to finish. This black fabric with like volcanoes on it is gonna be the background and then our applique is gonna be on this green. So step one is gonna be to, um, oh, that's a needle. To uh, iron in the creases, we're ironing in the creases this time. This we're gonna iron all the way into a pie. I'll go ahead, I'm gonna iron it this way. Fold it again into the pie. Pizza slice, really, green pizza. I actually, maybe I should have started with this. I haven't even picked a design out of the book yet. So let's look at our books. I have all three of um, the Po'akalani quilt design books. Let's see what this one is. I kind of like that in green. It's the La Ua A, a beautiful scented native fern used extensively in decorative landscaping throughout the state. Okay, that's the potential. Oh, the design is made on one fourth fold. In which case we would have to open this. If we choose it, we would have to open this back up because we did an eighth fold. See, that's, I should have picked the pattern before I did any of this. Ooh. Guys, I'm the most indecisive person that's ever been invented. That's just the truth. I'm extraordinarily indecisive. What was wrong with the fern? Didn't I say I liked the fern? I dog-eared it. I don't know, that might get pretty darn monotonous, all those peaks and valleys, but what are we doing here? We're not here to, you know, do a, a circle or a square, you know what I mean? Like, we're gonna do it, let's do it. Ooh. Um, I think we're gonna go with R. This. Oh, I'm scared. It has to be beautiful. It has to be perfect. Okay, fearlessness. Let's take this. Let's fold it the right way because we did it wrong. So I need a piece of paper and I'm just going to. Oh, I hope this looks good. Trace it. Okay, step one is done. Step two, cut it out. So this is what I'm gonna do. I don't like to pin the paper on. Maybe I will put one pin in. Sissy put it on um, and then she cut around it. Instead, I'm just going to 
with my pencil, we'll see where this show up. Yeah, with my pencil, I'm gonna trace it. So here I go. So I can take this off, I don't need it anymore. And uh, we cut. Oof, I have to be careful. This is nerve wracking. Matter of fact, this is what I'll do. That way it's gonna be easier for me to cut like this. This is actually pretty hard to do when there's eight layers of fabric, which it was on this one behind me, uh, but it's doable. I did it. All right, so that's all cut out. Now we open this. And we put this on. Make it center, make it beautiful and lovely and perfect. I'm gonna see if I can put a pin like just in one layer. What way am I gonna open it? This way. Or maybe this might be the hardest part because this, it doesn't really want to do what you say here, but. I'm just putting one pin in the one layer, then I'll kind of, while I hold that there, open it up. And then, Beautiful. That was actually not as hard as what I thought it was gonna be. Of course, it's not basted on there yet. So how are we gonna base this? All right, with some string. Start anywhere, I guess. It does not matter where. I'm going a fat quarter of an inch, which is to say more than a quarter of an inch. I have actually been to Hawaii before a couple years ago. It was fantastic. My friends and I had a week off during the summer. Whole group of eight of us flew down and uh, just enjoyed our lives for a week. I had the honor of getting a tattoo done by a man named Kali'io Kalani Makua, who is a tattoo artist. He's been featured in National Geographic. He's a tattoo artist that um, works in the traditional Hawaiian and Pacific Islander hand tap method of tattooing. I had the honor of getting tattooed by him on my leg. And uh, that's one of, like, one of my favorite tattoos. It's extremely painful. He was using um, tools that he made himself, handmade. Uh, the needles were bird bones, sharpened and uh, dipped in ink on the end of a stick, fastened on the end of that stick, and then he dipped it in the ink and, uh, and yeah, hand tapped the design into my skin. In a tr Hawaiian tradition, he told me, you don't tell the artist what you want the artist tells you what you're gonna get so the artist decides because he knows or she knows you know better than you do so which was fine with me because i wanted the experience of that so he gave me this design he told me everything that it meant um i think it took around an hour and a half to two hours and uh there were two guys there helping him it was extremely painful. It it bled a little bit. I have always wanted the tattoo. I didn't care about if it hurt or not, and I'm not afraid of needles. Wow, look at that. All that talking and we've done one half of one leaf, not even quite. This is gonna take a minute. All right, so I'll probably do the rest of this off camera and uh, I'll come back when it's done. So I have finished basting this one and I realized that I need to start another one. I was reading an article 
about these. And it talked about these quilts are actually like, you know, the patterns of it, I guess, like, are meant to reflect the culture. The culture of Hawaii. Why oh, is this big enough? So I realized that I need to design one that kind of represents, I don't know, something I like. So I'm going to do a snowflake. This is the background. It's not very Hawaiian. I don't think it ever snows in Hawaii. But uh, I come from Pennsylvania where it does snow periodically. And I am not in Pennsylvania right now. I'm very far away from Pennsylvania where I am now. I've been so jealous of everyone that's home that um, is getting to experience the snow and not me. My mom is even complaining about it even though I love it. I love the snow, I miss the snow. I would love to move somewhere even like, even more snowy than Pennsylvania. So I'm doing a snowflake. Hold on, let's put this away. We will uh, work on that later. This is my white fabric. So yeah, let's just draw on this. Uh, how do you draw a snowflake? I don't know. That's it, that's all I'm doing. Let's see what it looks like. No telling what it looks like, but let's check. All right, this is it. Let's see what it looked like. Moment of truth. This is gonna look out of place in the quilt, but you know, I don't, I just realized that I don't have to do all the designs, you know, from the book. I can make my own design and make a snowflake. Why not? Okay, here we go. It is looking so sickening right now. This is gorgeous. It really reads snowflake. I mean, that is very clearly a snowflake. I'm happy about that. That was all that mattered. Let's pin it. So I'm gonna baste this, and then uh, I'll show you how I sew it. It's actually pretty easy. But I'll do, I'm gonna base this off camera and then I will be back. At this point, I'm following along with the video tutorial made by Sissy at Puakalani Quilts. If you wanna learn this technique, I definitely recommend watching her video because she does a really good job of explaining how to do it. And she also talks about Hawaiian quilts and how her mother only had one hand and she learned how to quilt with one hand. She also offers this advice, which I thought was really nice. For those of you who are just starting to do needle turn applique, uh, you might not be happy with your initial stitches, but in our classes, we tell our beginner students, we don't want you to take any of the stitches out. You just continue just keep going and I can promise you that when you get to your end, when you come back around, you're going to be really happy with the stitches you made. It just takes time and it just takes practice to learn this technique. That's interesting. They don't want you <clears throat> to take out your ugly stitches. You should leave in your ugly stitches. Um, and then when you come back around, you will be happy with the stitches. Um, it's basically like a record of your learning process from bad to good. Okay, so this is coming along. I think the thing for me to do now is I'm gonna make the rest of these Hawaiian blocks off camera. My intention is to make 12. So 
So I will come back with 12 Hawaiian blocks completed and then I'll show you what we're going to do next. All right, so we're back. We have all 12 of the Hawaiian blocks done. And the next step now is gonna be, we need to cut them all to exactly the same size because I just cut them like roughly originally so they're not all the same size. So they're all now cut into 19 inch exactly squares. Um, the only problem was this one, uh, the thing 19 inches cut it right to the edge of it. So now when we sew them together, this can be cut off inside the seam allowance, but I really don't think the quilt police are gonna come and yell at me. So I'm just gonna roll with it. And then this one has always been a problem for me. You can see the brown fabric behind the orange. And uh, I think I'm just gonna leave it. This was the very first one I ever did, the Ulu. And it's like she said in the video, like when you are doing this, you will look back on your old stitches. Don't take them out and redo them because it's part of the journey. So I'm gonna keep my original very first one as it was and always remember that that's which one it was. Um, it's also ever so slightly too small. It's about a quarter inch too small. What I'm going to do about that is I'm going to put this block on the edge and hopefully I can hide that shortness inside the binding. So hopefully a quarter of an inch uh, too short will not be too, too short. Um, what we're going to do next is get it up on the design wall and uh, figure out a layout and then sew it up. All right, so this is the finished quilt top. I love it, I think it's gorgeous. Our next step is gonna be make our sandwich and then quilt it. And this is how you quilt it. It's called echo quilting. So we're gonna, first we're gonna stitch in the ditch. Then we're gonna, uh, I don't know if we're gonna go in or out first, but we're gonna go, we're gonna follow it basically, the pattern in rippling, you know, waves like that on all of them. The background is going to be plaid flannel, which is a choice. Um, I have some cotton batting. Cotton batting! Okay, guys, so it's time for an update. I have quilted about half the quilt. Um, I've been using this. This is my quilting hoop. It's doing an okay job. This one is a, like a little bit flimsy. I wish it was stronger. I'll just show you how I put the hoop on, and we will do some more quilting. So I start with the design on the inside and quilt it first. 
which means the whole design has to be inside the hoop. Put this on. I need to use a leg to hold it down on one side, unless you have three arms. And that's that. And then I... Oh. Okay, so at this point, I need to actually look at the design. This is a rose. And I did not get it from the book. I got it from the website because it was um, before I had the books. And uh, it's, the, it's the flower for the month of June. Each month had like a flower. Um, so I want to look up the quilting design because they had a special way of quilting. Of course, you don't have to do that, but they had a way of quilting that I liked. That um, I want to do that rose. The rose symbolizes passion and love. They did a whole thing. Let's see if I can copy this. I need a pencil. This pencil sucks. So I'm using Milner's needles. I don't know what milnering is, but uh, they seem to work very well for this. They're long and thin. Where's my scissors? I always lose my scissors. This is a small pair. guys the Hawaii quilt is finally finished I'm very proud of it it doesn't have a name it's just Hawaiian quilt um, this is the tightest quilting I've ever done before and it took me a very long time but I am very proud of it I think it's gorgeous so that's all thank you for watching this video and please come again